political refers to the political philosophy of making important long-term decisions based on short-term practical convenience. But that's what their views are, and they have a right to their views. What I object to is when people describe our work using their term, open source, and give everyone the idea that we agree with them. So, in effect, we are being censored by systematically misrepresenting us. Most of the users of the GNU plus Linux system today don't know that it's basically GNU. They think the whole thing is Linux. And they've never heard of software Libero. They think it's open source. And they think that the whole point is to have higher quality software. Well, for the free software movement, having good quality software is a nice bonus. But that's all. It's a secondary benefit. Freedom is what's really important. So, if I have a choice between a program that works very well, but is proprietary, and a program that doesn't work so well and has lower quality, but it's free. I will choose, I have only one choice, and that's the second program. I can't use the proprietary program. It's unethical. It would take away my freedom. I won't let that be on my computer. So it's this free program or nothing for me. But suppose what we really want is a free program that has high quality. In other words, we want something up here, the best of both. How would we get that? If we start from this free program, which has low quality, we can clean it up, we can fix the bugs, and we can make it high quality. All we have to do is work, and we will get what we want. But suppose we start from this proprietary program, that works well. Can we make it free by doing work? No, it's impossible. We'll never be able to make a free, good quality program that we want starting from this proprietary program. It's completely useless for people that want freedom. So there's only one thing we can do. Take the free software that exists, if it's useful, and do the work we need to get what we really want. It's the only way to get there. With rare exceptions. You know, if this company did a good job, but they go bankrupt, maybe we can buy the program and make it free. But those opportunities are rather rare. And absent such an opportunity, there is nothing we can do to make that program free. So, what this shows is that there are different values within the free software community. There are the values of free software and there are the values of open source. And I want to promote the free software values. So, I don't participate in open source activities. Sometimes I'll participate in a joint activity in the name of free software and open source. If it's on other issues that are of concern to us both, yes, I'll make a common cause with them when, the when it was called for. But I do not participate in activities to promote open source, because there are plenty of activities for free software that I can put my time into instead. And that way I'm working for what I really believe in. So when somebody proposes an activity called open source, I say, well, people who support open source can do that, but I'm not one of them. So I'm going to do something else for the free software cause. Now, sometimes the things that they're doing are good. You know, that's a different question. But I want to spread the awareness of the values of freedom and social solidarity because ultimately, our future depends on what we value. You see, freedom is frequently threatened, and if we don't defend it, we will lose it.
And this applies to every area of life. And people are campaigning in many areas of life to defend human rights. But we face a disadvantage that most people have never even considered the question of whether the user of a program deserves any human rights as the user of a program. Society, for the most part, has never even considered the question. You see, almost all users of software started with proprietary software, surrounded by other users of proprietary software. Everyone they knew was using proprietary software. They couldn't even imagine there might be another way. So they just took for granted that software is usually proprietary and that's okay. Now, we, in the free software movement, we disagree. We are trying to pull that into question. We believe we have identified four human rights that you deserve as the user of a program. And those are the four freedoms that define free software. But most people have never even heard this idea. Most of the users of the GNU slash Linux system have never heard this idea. Because all they've heard is open source. And people, in order to keep their freedom, have to defend it. In order to defend it, they have to value it. And in order to value it, they have to know what it is. And in our field, we are at step one, still trying to do step one, to show people that there is an idea of freedom, freedom that they should have as software users. And the fact that most of our users have never heard of this idea makes our community weak. Because our freedom is threatened, and only a fraction of us recognize that there is a freedom. So only that fraction of us can possibly try to defend it. And then there are millions more who are enjoying that freedom, but they don't appreciate it, so they won't defend it. If we had their help, we would win these battles so much more easily. So that's why I don't participate in the open source activities because I know that what our community needs most is to teach more people to demand freedom and join us in defending freedom. That's what we need to establish a free society in a lasting way. <clears throat> in fact, when we don't value our freedom, we can lose our freedom can slip through our fingers because we don't bother closing our hands. And this has happened. In 1992, we had the GNU system plus Linux, which was a free operating system you could install in a PC and use it in freedom. A few years later, there were several distributions of GNU slash Linux, rival distributions. And different groups of people were maintaining them, and they were competing. So the developers of one distribution had a clever idea. They could add some non-free programs to their distribution, and that would make it more attractive. They would present these non-free programs as a bonus. And they didn't see anything wrong with this because they didn't care about freedom. They were essentially open source people, although the term didn't exist yet. And most of the users also didn't value their freedom. So they looked at that and they said, oh great, it's more convenient. And so this, <clears throat> this tactic was successful. The developers of other distributions looked at that and said, uh oh, they have an advantage. We had better add these non-free programs too. And so they did, most of them, and the other distributions, as it happens, there was one that was free, but they gave up. And so a few years later, all, there were hundreds of distributions of video slash and every one of them 
steered people towards proprietary software. So when people asked me 10 years ago, where can I get this system you've just told me about? I had to say, I'm sorry, I don't know of any place I can ethically recommend because all the distributions contain non-free software. Well, today, I'm happy to say that there are some distributions that are totally free. For instance, there is Ututo, U-T-U-T-O, which is named after a, a lizard in Argentina that apparently people are fond of. And then there is BLAG, which stands for BLAG, Linux, and GNU, another recursive acronym. And there is GNUSense, whose name is also a joke. It's spelled G New Sense, G N E W S E N S E. But my title as the head of the GNU project is the Chief GNUSense, spelled G Nuisance. But it sounds the same. In any case, oh, and there is Triscale. Well, these are not the distributions you've heard of, mostly. These are not the distributions that are well known. Those distributions continue to steer people towards non-free software. So we have begun to recover the freedom that we lost, but only just begun. And those non-free distros every day are telling millions of people don't care about freedom, just care about convenience. So we in the free software movement have to argue against that. Now, oh, by the way, uh, I'm going to want the plastic bag soon. And also the green bag, it's going to be time soon to use the contents of that. Uh, I'm not, oh, there you are. I forgot to write Why do they do this? 
They are trying to turn the schools into instruments to impose dependence on society. Here's how it works. They give these gratis copies of non-free software to the schools. The schools teach the students to use them. And so the students develop a dependence. And then they graduate with a dependence. And after they graduate, the same developer does not offer those former students gratis copies. Not anymore. And they go to work for companies. The developer does not offer those companies gratis copies. You see, the plan is that the school directs the students down the path of permanent dependence, and they pull the rest of society along with them, everybody into dependence on that developer. It's just like giving them addictive, giving the school addictive drugs saying, inject this into your students and make them dependent and we won't charge you anything. The first dose is gratis. Once you have the dependence, then you have to pay. Well, the school would not accept those drugs, even if they are gratis. And it should not accept the proprietary software, even if it's gratis. Because the school has a social mission to teach the students, to teach the next generation to be good citizens of a strong, capable, independent, cooperating, and free society. And when it comes to computing, the way you do that is by teaching free software, software that doesn't make people dependent but instead makes them strong. However, there's a deeper reason for the education of the best programmers. Some people are natural born programmers. At the age of 10 to 13, they're fascinated with programming. And if they use a program, they want to know how it works. But when our, our youth he asks the teacher, how does this program work? If it's proprietary, the teacher can only say, I'm sorry, it's a secret, I don't know. And education is not allowed. Proprietary software is the enemy of the spirit of education. There is no place for proprietary software in a school. But if it's free software, the teacher can explain as much as he knows and then say, here's the source code. Read it and you'll understand everything about this program. And if there's any point that you find hard to understand, show it to me and we'll figure it out together. This gives our young programmer a chance to learn something very important. That code is not clear, so don't write code.